and x represents the number of heads. Okay. So what I'm interested in, I want to compute what is the probability that x would be 20. In other words, that number of uh, successes that you're going to get is equal to 20. Okay. So there are two ways to do it. One way is that obviously x is a binomial random variable, so you can apply the binomial uh, distribution formula. Okay. And um, okay, you can apply the binomial distribution formula and compute this probability. But our task, so what is our task? Our task is to compute compute um, compute this probability by this approximation okay by this theorem actually okay this de Morbo's Laplace theorem okay so by this normal approximation this is what that I would like to do. One thing is, if you compute it, for example, through directly through, say, binomial distribution, so we know that this is going to be 40 choose 20 times, say, one half times uh, uh, 20 times one half. 20, so this is going to be a number that is 0 0.1254 and let's see what number we get through this approximation. Now I want to compute the probability of x equal to 20, okay, but in order to apply or compute this, this result, I need to do what I need to write this in the terms of an inequality. So how can I write x equal to 20 in the terms of an inequality? I can write this as in the terms of an inequality that when your number of successes are between say, uh, say between 19.5 and 20.5. So number of successes is a discrete number, it's a natural number. So what is the natural number between 19.5 and 20.5? So the only natural number is 20, so you know, both are saying the same thing. Okay. What I need to do next? I need to subtract the average and divide by a standard deviation. Okay. So I need to do what is the probability that x minus np which is 40 by 2 divided by square root of n which is 40 times 1 half and times 1 half okay and, uh, and you can have the same number here so from this 19.5 I need to subtract 20 and divide by scale root of 10 because this is what it is going to be less than or equal to 20.5 minus 20 and scale root of 10 okay so, so if I simplify this so this is going to be what is the probability that my x minus 20 by scale root of 10 6 between say minus 1.6 uh, minus 0.616 and plus 0.16 okay so this is what we do in the simplified form of it now if I want to approximate this probability by this so what I need to do I need to I can say that this is approximately phi of 0.16 minus phi of minus 0.16. So I can look at these two values from the table. 
okay, and it turns out to be a number that is equal to uh, 0.1272. Now you can look at this result actually. So up to two significant figures, so up to the first two digits, they are, they are accurate actually. They are, they are accurate. And the only third and fourth digit are different. So in other words, it gives gives you a pretty good approximation, even with when when n is 40 actually, and p is one half. So it gives you a good approximation. Okay. So this approximation tells you that uh, there are there is 12 or 13 uh, and a number of times you're going to get success, and this also saves something else actually, something something same. Okay. So I hope that you know. This example kind of convinced you that the exact value and the approximated value are really near if your n is large. Okay, even if n is 40 actually. Okay. I would like to do another example. An interesting example. That help us that kind of practically help people to do different kind of surveys and you know how to know that a given survey that is happening. So 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 in these days you 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 listen to different kind of surveys. Okay, so like this team is doing well and that team is doing well. So this party is doing well and that party is not doing well. So according to the, the Awami survey, like this is happening. But the question is, are those surveys the fair surveys actually? So how can we know it? That those surveys are the fair surveys. So this is what the next thing that I would like to so this example is what do you call example 4i that goes like this. So, so we are in a city, for example, New York City. Okay, and we want to have an opinion of the people. Uh, about um, about about one person actually. Okay. So shall we outlaw? In other words, kya hum cigarette pine par pabandi lagaye ya na lagaye? So shall we outlaw cigarettes or not actually? Okay. So shall we? Outlaw cigarettes in the city or not? Okay. Any cigarettes for Papandi Laga in New York City? Mein. So, if further, let's assume that the fifty two per cent of the New York population is in favor of uh, this outlawing of the law actually. When 52% chante ke jai pavadi lagai jai cigarettes par. And the rest say of the 48% are against outlawing what do you call uh, the cigarette. Okay, so let's, let's assume this. Now, here are some of the interesting questions. Here are some of the interesting questions. You know, one way to interpret these two probabilities is also that, okay, if you pick a random person from New York City, it is, so it is 52 percent, there are 52 percent of chances that he will be in the favor of outlawing 
the cigarettes and there is 48% of the chances that he will stay neutral or will be uh, um, will be against uh, outlying the uh, cigarette sector. Okay. So what is the question? The question is this. Imagine, imagine you randomly choose a sample of n people. Okay, so we randomly choose sample of n people. Okay, and I'm interested in n. What is probability that in this random sample of n people 50% of the people will be will be in favor of the proposition that we should outlaw the signature Okay. So, one of the fundamental questions is that I want to have an opinion that how many of the people are in against are, uh, are in the favor of this law in New York City. Now, obviously, the, the population of New York City is big, okay? it's a huge population. I can't go at every single door and ask that you know whether you are in against favor of um, uh, uh, whether you are in favor of uh, what do you call uh, outlawing the cigarette or not. Okay. So what I need to do, I need to choose some sample. Okay. You need you know biryani ka test jo hai if you want to. For example, taste biryani, you're not gonna eat the entire deg actually. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take some random sample, okay, of what do you call um, rice and taste it. And based on that random sample, you would like to make an opinion about entire what do you call um, the entire population. So same as case here. I can't go to every single person in New York and ask that whether he is in favor or she is in favor of uh, outlying cigarette. But I can choose some number of samples. Okay, so I can choose some number of uh, I, I can I can I can choose a sample out of the entire population of what do you call uh, randomly choose a sample from the entire population of New York City and ask from that sample that you know um, uh, ask from that sample that whether you are against or in the favor of outlying cigarette but here's the interesting question how big this sample should be because think about it so if if there is there are a million people living in new york city and if you ask randomly from, for example, um, say two people or three people in, you know, in the street, okay, that whether they are in favor of outlying the cigarette or not, you can't just make an opinion about a million from, you know, what do you call these three people actually. Uh, keeping in view this data, you can't just do this. So your sample size should be substantially big. But the question is, kitna bada hona It depends on ke aap kitne confidence ke saath, you know, yani kitna confidence aap hasil karna chahte hain apne opinion ke baare mein. So let's do this calculation and move on to uh, another question. So, so the first thing that we would like to do that can you, for example, if I give you some n, so for example, some people, um, so say say if if you randomly choose eleven people, what is the probability that fifty percent of eleven will be in the favor of 
outline the case. Or if you choose say uh, 101 people, what is the probability that 51, 50% 50 of the 101 people will be in the favor of outlining the cigarette? Or if you choose, for example, 1001, you know, sample quite a big sample actually, okay? Um, then oh, 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 what is the probability that out of the 1001 people, there will be 50% of the people who will be in the favor of outlining the, what do you call, cigarette. And so for these particular values, we have to compute these probabilities. And the final interesting question that we would like to ask is that how large your n, in other words, your sample size should be, n should be, Should be so that uh, how large n should be so that we will have we will have more than okay we have a 95 percent of chances that in this sample 95 percent of chances that in this sample there are 50% of the people who have, what do you call, uh, who are in the favor of outlying the cigarette action. Okay? So, so that we, we will have a 95%, we will have a 95%, let me write it. So how big this M should be? Let's call this probability as B. Uh, probability as capital P. So, how large should be this N so that we will have that this capital probability P is bigger than what do you call 0.95 or the 95 percent. In other words, with 95 percent of the confidence, I can say that yes, in this N people, there are 50% of the people who have, who are in the favor of outlying the cigarette actually. Okay? So that would be kind of a fair uh, sample size to know that, you know, um, with, with this much confidence of the 95% to know that the people are in the favor of outlying the cigarette actually. So let's, let's start with this. Let's just start with this. Okay. Now, this n or any of these n's, if you if you pick a person and ask from it ask from him that are you in the favor of outlying the cigarette or not okay you know favor mein hai outline uh, cigarette karne ke ya nahi to doi possibility so either he is going to say yes or going to say no at so this is like a bernali trial so this is like a bernali trial so asking this question from n people is like doing the n bernali trials n independent Bernoulli trials, okay, in which you know each one uh, is saying that um, you know each one has the opinion in, 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 in the favor or the against of this law actually, okay. So if I say that S n is the number of people who are in in favor of law, okay, who are in the favor of law, then Sn is really a binomially distributed random variable with a parameter n because you are doing this trial for n times and what is the probability of success 
in each of the trial in other words what is the probability that a person will be in the favor of uh, the law are going to be the against of uh, uh, against the law basically the probabilities are given here so there is a 50% 52% probability Probability is 0.52 actually. Probability is 0.52. Okay. So with so Sn is binomially distributed, okay, and n is a, you know a, a number, and p is the 0.52. In other words, the probability of a person being in the favor of the law is 0.52. So what I'm interested in, I'm interested in what is the probability that this Sn, in other words, the number of people who are in the favor of the law are going to be above 50 percent actually, above 50 percent. So what would be the 50 percent of the n? So the 50 percent of the n is going to be 0.5 n. Okay, 0.5 n. So this is what that I'm interested in computing. Now, let's compute this probability. And how can I compute this probability through my previous normal approximation that I need to subtract the mean out of Sn and divide by the standard deviation. Now, what would be the mean? So the mean is going to be Np. So the p is known, known to me, so it's going to be 0.52n divided by a square root of n, okay, and uh, 0.52 and 0.58, okay, and bigger than, bigger than what, 0.5n minus 0.52n divided by, you know, the same number as this, okay? And now, what I can do? I can say this is, this random variable is basically now a normally distributed random variable, a standard normal random variable. Because the previous probabilities, the previous theorem basically tells you that if you have, if you do, say for example, binomial trials for the large number of times, then your number of successes are no more going to be binomially distributed, but they are going to be, or they can be approximated or estimated by the standard normal distribution. So this random variable is now really the standard normal random variable. So I can say that this is equal to R. This is approximately probability of say Z being, if you simplify this guy, so you're gonna get minus 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 0 0.04 square root of, and this is what it is going to be. And this is same as since you know the normal curve is symmetric. Okay, so if this is minus z, so you are talking about all this part, but this is same as if you take z and you talk about all this part. R, if you don't want to think from this perspective, you can just simply apply what do you call. Uh, due to the symmetry, okay, so let me, let me write it again, so if this is a standard normal random variable and say my minus x is here and symmetrically x is somewhere here. So what is the probability of saying that z is bigger than or equal to x so is going to cover this all entire area. But this is same as, because of the symmetry of the curve, if you cover all this entire area. Okay? So in other words, due to symmetry, this probability is same as probability less than 
minus 0 0.04 square root of 10. And hence, you can compute this probability as a phi of minus 0 0.04 and the square root of 10. Okay. So for n, a sample of n people, what is the probability that the more than 50% of the, the sample n would be uh, in the favor of the outlying the cigarette is this actually. And now in this I can substitute these values. So, so for n equal to 11, this probability is equal to, is going to be equal to, what do you call, um, 0 point say, this is going to be positive, 0 0.1328 and you can compute it to be 0 0.5528. For n equal to 11. How about the same for n equal to 101? So for 101, this is going to be point, point 0.89. Uh, no. For for 101, yes. For 101, this is going to be point 0.6562. And this is going to be 0.8973 for n equal to 1001. So what are, what are, what are these three numbers are telling you? So this number is telling you, okay, this number is telling you that if your sample size is 11, if your sample size is 11, there is a 55% chance, only 55% chance, that more than half of the people or the half of the people will be in the favor of the low. And if you increase your sample size and take it to say 101, then there is a 65% chance, okay, uh, there is a 65% chance, 65 or 66% chance roughly that more than 50% of the people will be in your favor in this samples uh, in 101 people. And if you choose say for example 1001 people, in other words you go out and ask from 1001 people, okay, randomly, truly randomly, whether they are in the favor of the law or the against, then there is a 90% of the chance that um, you know, uh, there is a 90% of the chance roughly that the 50% of the people will be in the favor of uh, will be in the favor of uh, the law. Okay. Last part is so one thing that you can do as you increase sample size, your probability of more than half being in the favor of um, more than half being in the favor of uh, what do you call law is 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 also increasing actually. So their probabilities are increasing. Now the last question is okay. What if if I want to if I want this probability to be above 95 percent actually, above 0.95. Question is what should be my sample size? In other words, how big my sample size should be so that I can say with the 95 percent confidence that there are 50 percent of the people in your sample that are in the, uh, that are in the favor of uh, the outlying the cigarette actually. Kitna bada aapka sample size hona chahiye ta ki aap is confident. In tino properties ko bhi aap isi tarikhe se estimate kar sakte hain. Yani agar 11 log hain to aap 55% confidence se keh sakte hain 
कि इन ग्यारह लोगों में से पचास लोग जो यानी जो आधे लोग हैं या आधे से ज्यादा लोग हैं वो फेवर में हैं लोग और अगर आपका सैंपल साइज बड़ा होता है तो वो आपका कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल पचपन से पैंसठ हो रहा है और अगर आपका सैंपल साइज थाउजेंड एंड वन हो रहा है तो आपका कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल यानी आप नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कॉन्फिडेंस से कह सकते हैं कि अगर आप एक हजार एक लोग लें न्यूयॉर्क सिटी में से तो उस उन एक हजार एक लोगों में से